Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Mike from Comp3 Interactive here. And today we're going to be taking a look at changing your mouse cursor when you're hovering over something that's clickable. It's always a good idea to do this because it gives the user a bit of indication that what they're hovering over is in fact a clickable object. And we're going to cover two ways of doing this because UI is treated differently than actual game objects. So we're going to need a little bit of tweaking in between. So let's just jump straight into it. So as you can see, I've got a little project set up. The only thing I've done is I've got a sprite of a chest and we have a chest script. Now, if we open the chest script up, I'll show you what it's doing. We've just got two sprites, a reference to the sprite render and a boolean so we know if the chest is open or closed. I'm grabbing the sprite renderer in the start method and all it's doing is using the default unity on mouse down function to open and close the chest whenever we click on it. Now, like I said, this is a standard Unity function. You don't have to do anything for this apart from reference it in your script. But we've got one more thing that we need to do before this will work. For on mouse down to work, our chest is going to need a box collider. Box collider 2D while we're working in 2D. So if we play our game, we should see that I can click on the chest and it opens and closes. But it's not strictly obvious that I can click on that. I know I can click on it because I've made the game. Anyone who downloads it, they're not going to know that. So let's fix that. First of all, we're going to need a controller script for our mouse. So we'll call it mouse control. Let's be original. And we'll open this up in Visual Studio. Now we don't need our start and update and just for ease we're going to make this a singleton. I know some people don't like singletons but I do and this is my video. So we'll quickly create a public static mouse control instance. Our awake method we need to check if instance is equal to null. If it is, we'll set instance equal to this, and we'll set this to don't destroy on load, so it'll persist between our scenes. Or else if we don't, uh, if we already have an instance, we will just destroy the game object. Simple as that. Now, if you want a better understanding of singletons, I do have a video dedicated to singletons on my channel, so make sure you check that out. And we're going to need a couple of texture 2D. Now, a cursor has to be a texture 2D type, and we'll make sure that our images are actually this type. So we'll just call this default cursor. Can I spell? No. Default cursor and clickable cursor. So we're almost done with this class. The last thing we need to do, we need two methods. We need a public void clickable and a public void default. So in clickable, we want to change our cursor to be the clickable version of our cursor. And in this instance, the two sprites that I have are a default bluish green arrow and a same the same colour for a finger to show that it's clickable. Universal symbols like that always work the best. So for clickable, we need to set a cursor dot set cursor and we're gonna need three parameters in here. First of which is going to be our clickable cursor texture. Next is going to be the hotspot. That's the point in which your cursor is actually active and clickable from. So we'll just set this to vector2.0. And the next one is your cursor mode. Why is cursor so difficult to spell? Cursor mode dot and we have for software and auto. We're going to use auto for this instance. 
and we can go ahead and copy that line down to our default and we'll just change this to default cursor instead. And just like that, our mouse control is completed. We can close that off and we just need to make sure that we have an object with it attached to it. So we'll call this mouse control and we'll just drag and drop our mouse control in. Now we'll just quickly set up our cursors. So I have a folder with two cursors in, one for the arrow, one for the finger. Now currently they are set to sprites. Now we don't want this, what we need, we need to click this and select cursor for our texture type and then we can set it to however we want. I love it as point no filter and I've taken compression off and we'll do the exact same again for the finger. So now that we've done that we'll be able to go over to our mouse control and drag in our default cursor and our clickable finger cursor. Alright so now that we have that working how can we actually call those methods for our chest? Well, what we could do inside chest, we could add public void on mouse enter. And again, this is a, uh, a default method for Unity, similar to on mouse down. But instead of triggering when you press the mouse button, this triggers whenever the mouse hovers over an object. And we can simply call mouse control dot instance dot clickable. So that will change our cursor to our clickable cursor whenever we hover over an object. And we can copy that and there's the exact opposite on mouse exit. So that'll trigger when your mouse leaves the game object. We'll set our cursor back to the default. We just jump back over to Unity. We should be able to see this working already. And we can. But we notice that when we first start the game, we still have our default cursor. We can easily fix that in mouse control. If we had a, a start method. And we can just call default inside that. So now when we play the game, we should start with our default cursor. And we do. And when we hover over, we can see that now it's obviously clickable. But the problem with this method is whenever we have a new object that's clickable, we have to add our on mouse exit and on mouse enter methods. And if we forget, our cursor won't change. So there's a quick way to fix this. So what we'll do, we'll go in, we'll just create a new C sharp script. And we'll call this clickable. Now, if we open this up, we can get rid of our start and update methods, but instead, we'll take out our on mouse enter and on mouse exit. We'll save that. And one more quick thing that we can do, because we know that a game object needs a box collider to be clickable, we can add a require component type of box collider 2d so whenever we attach or inherit from this script inherit being the keyword there our object will automatically be given a box collider 2d so if you haven't guessed what i'm going to do already i'm going to remove mono behavior and instead inherit from clickable so now our chest will have on mouse enter and on mouse exit by default. We can test that out by playing our game again and our finger still appears. So now every object that we create that we want to be clickable we can inherit from clickable and it'll automatically change the mouse cursor. And don't worry about losing your standard mono behavior functions because Clickable still inherits from mono behavior, so that'll trickle down and chest will also inherit from mono behavior by default. Okay, so that's game objects done. Let's move on to some UI. So we'll just add a new button. We'll 
move this about a little bit, pop it up here and give it some text. Cool button, cool beans. Why am I like this? So like I said before, UI treats mouse action slightly differently. It uses, if I actually select the button, uses event triggers. Now there are already some event triggers default to Unity. And the ones that we're interested in are pointer enter and pointer exit. So what we could do, we could create a similar script to the clickable class and every time we create a button we could add the event, drag that script in and then call it. But then again that can get quite messy if you forget to drag and drop them in, your cursor won't change. So we'll just start off by saying we're not going to do that. We're going to create our own custom events. Now that may sound a little difficult, I assure you it isn't. So all we need to do, we'll create one more C Sharp script, we'll call this custom events and open in Visual Studio. Now we can get rid of the start and update. We're going to need to be using Unity Engine dot event systems. And now that we're using that, we can inherit from event trigger. Now what doing that will allow us is to override some of the Unity functions. So we'll do a public override void on pointer enter. And that'll pre-populate with a few things. We can leave the base for on pointer enter, but in this case we don't actually need it and one more that we'll need is again the exact opposite on pointer exit so the well they're exactly the same as on mouse enter and on mouse exit but these are the ui functions and exactly the same we can copy our calls out on mouse exit will be on pointer exit and just like that we have our own custom events so what can we do with these well we click our button if we add a component and we add our custom events component we can see it looks very similar to the default unity events so if we click add new we can add pointer enter and we can also add pointer exit and that's all we need to do we don't need to link it up to anything because a default action in on pointer enter is to change our cursor to clickable or vice versa change it back to the default so we should be able to play our game and we have our pointer changing when we're over ui and still when we're over game objects and it's as simple as that if you've learned something today, then drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also find us over on social media for more bite-sized Unity and C-Sharp tips. I've been Mike for Comp3 Interactive, and I'll see you again soon.